Katie Thurston's season of The Bachelorette has come to a close, and so, like I do with every season, it's time to break it down and give it a grade. How does season 17 compare to seasons past, what worked and what didn't, and in order to figure this all out, I break down the season into four main categories. The lead, production, the cast, and the romance. I give all of those a grade, mash it all together, and come up with a final, ultimate grade for the season. I find that this helps give me a proper perspective of the season as a whole, especially when a season's ending leaves a bad taste in your mouth, which frankly, season 17 did for me. And warning, this is just my opinion. If you want, you can leave your grades for the season down in the comment section below. So, let's discuss Katie's season. A season that, to me, really comes down to control, and the realization that sometimes, trying to control everything is just plain impossible. We just crossed the threshold. Now, Katie Thurston as the lead was an unconventional pick simply because she was, well, 11th from the throne, so to speak. On Matt James' season of The Bachelor, Katie Thurston was eliminated with 10 women still remaining, and typically, consideration for the next Bachelorette only includes women in the top four, sometimes the top six. Now, of course, Michelle Young, the runner-up from that season, also became The Bachelorette, but behind the scenes, it's been said that Katie was actually the first one considered for the role. And certainly, Katie was a fan favorite from Matt James' season, as she came to the defense of women who had been bullied in the house like Sarah and Brittany. And I know that some will say Katie herself participated in some of the Sarah slander before eventually going to apologize, but the point that I'm trying to make with all of that is that Katie exited Matt's season with certain expectations. Expectations that one, the audience was going to expect her to be a bachelorette who did not tolerate bullying or any of the toxic behavior that we often see on the show, and two, that she better deliver a good season if so many other women, quote-unquote, ahead of her in line, were passed over for the job. And these expectations of her, expectations to follow this sort of sacred timeline for a season, I think are reflected in the decisions that she made. For example, the desire to immediately weed out those not here for the right reasons. Which is not a bad thing. I just think that, at times, Katie relied on the feelings of the group over her own instincts. Which might have been done in an attempt to not have something happen to her that's happened to so many leads in the past. Going through six episodes being fooled by someone while the audience screams at their TV saying, How is this person still here? How do they not see this person for who they really are? And I'll be honest, if I were on the show and I was The Bachelor, that would be a huge fear for me as well. I too would probably consider, well, maybe if some of these people are saying this person is not here for the right reasons, I should probably just send them home right away so I don't look like a fool. I mean, we did see Katie say she was actually going to keep Carl around until the men spoke out about it. They all feel that Carl needs to go home. Hmm. Like, I don't know what I should do because originally I plan to keep Carl tonight. Which, yes, was probably the right move, but it also seemed to breed this idea that the men could make accusations and it would work. Now, maybe in the same season with another cast, the guys wouldn't have formed this hit squad where week after week another person was accused of being there for the wrong reasons, but that's something that you can't control. So in the end, it probably would have just been better to say, f*** it, I'm going to make whatever decision I want. I'm the Bachelorette after all, let me figure out that Carl or Thomas or whoever is a knob on my own. And I wonder. If these moments like sending Carl home, or more specifically, slamming Thomas by baiting him with a rose and then calling him out, also accompany this expectation that the season needed to be good in order to justify why Katie was picked. Now, that whole Thomas stuff was likely a production decision as well, trying to have a moment like when Hannah Brown pulled back the rose pedestal from Luke P. But what made that moment was that it wasn't planned. It just happened. It was in the moment. These seasons are truly the best when that control is relinquished. We all roll our eyes when drama seems forced by production, but when it comes to stuff like Katie and Greg's breakup, which was far from controlled, we're enthralled. Same goes for the romance in this franchise. When it's not forced, we too fall for the couple. And I think this sense of control also applies to Katie on social media. Which, first of all, I did love how active Katie was on Instagram and Twitter. I'd prefer that over the opposite. 
but I also think it's a double-edged sword. Make a wrong post or like something that you shouldn't, and even if you immediately delete it, someone has already screenshotted it and it's off to the races with the online speculation. Plus, some people were just ticked off that she threw out all these red herrings to try and fool Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok sleuthers. But eventually, like with most things in life, you learn that you can't control everything. Michael leaves suddenly, Greg leaves suddenly, as the season starts airing, Greg becomes a fan favorite, which I think led to a lot of the frustration that we saw with Katie. In digging into Greg at the After the Final Rose, Katie was taking back control, which, strangely enough, was kinda like doing what Greg did when they broke up, trying to grasp control of an extremely complicated narrative when there's wrong on both sides. Now, all this being said, there's a lot I want to commend Katie on as well. Being so open about her sexual assault on national TV took a lot of guts, and encouraging the men to be open and share the vulnerable parts of their life if they're ready and doing so without judgment helps us to understand where a lot of them were coming from. I also think it's good to normalize people sharing their emotions and not being judged in return. So Katie is getting a grade of C. I guess C for control. I think Katie expected to have much more of that in her journey as Bachelorette, which I don't blame her for, but if you think you're the one in control of any season, think again. That only lies with one group of people. Production is next. The masterminds behind everything. They control the edit, they make the story. Every step you took to get here, I paved the road. You, you just walked down it. But let's start with all the good before we get into the bad. All right, here's the good. Okay, on to the bad. So what was up with all the repeat dates? I get we're in a bubble, but come on. The truth or dare date with the eating and saying sexy things into an ear seems an awful lot like the exact same date that they did on Tasha season. We dare each of you guys Yummy. to eat a full habanero pepper, and you have to then propose your feelings to this lovely woman. <laughs> each of you are gonna eat two habanero peppers. You're also gonna get down on your knee, take this ring, and propose your love for Katie. Or what about erotic stories on Matt James' season? Erotic stories also on Katie's. Off-roading? Off-roading. Wrestling date? Wrestling date. Feels like we're just in a different timeline of the same season. Then, when it came to one of the more interesting dates, they cut out the best part. Don't tell me they couldn't cut out a few minutes of Aaron and James calling Hunter short in order to put in this runway fun. It could've, nay, should've, been done. And speaking of, Hunter's edit with the snorting to make him look bad, while it was actually because he has mild Tourette's, totally gross and not necessary to put in the show. Not to mention them pinning Michael's injury on him in the previews and editing in him saying he got what he deserved. He deserved exactly what he got. Really ticked me off as that never happened. And who knows who else got an edit like that. Plus, I felt beat over the head with the For the Right Reason storyline that just passed on from one person to the other. And I definitely think that Blake was way more sure of his decision to propose than the edits let on. I mean, I get that adding the Will He Won't He storyline to the show added suspense to the end, but it also really took away from the buildup of romance between Blake and Katie that was happening before their eventual engagement. Still, I was lying when I said there was nothing good this season. Trigger warnings and highlighting rain when the topic of Katie's assault was discussed was a step in the right direction, and they did dedicate more time into getting to know people this time around, at least more than they did with Matt James's season, even if it wasn't as much time as I'd hoped for. I also liked the addition of Tasha and Caitlyn as temporary hosts. I know people were mixed on this, and I do think Tasha and Caitlyn are still finding their feet as hosts. I mean, this was their first time after all, and that's always going to come with growing pains, but I really liked having someone who had been in Katie's shoes accompany her throughout the season, especially while all of the Greg stuff happened. So I think that was a good choice, especially considering how little time they had to fill the role. All in all, production is getting a C-. Next is the cast. I'll be honest, it's rather hard to grade the cast, as we had such a mixed bag this time around, and the season was cut short. 
On one hand, we got to know a lot about Greg and Michael and Andrew and all the men who went on the Nick Vial group date. On the other hand, so much time was taken away by all the discussions about who was there for the right reasons or who wanted to be The Bachelor. Which, after like two episodes, got a little tiring. Now, Thomas is hard to grade, as I don't think he was as villainous as the show made him out to be, but he was also pretty political in his answering of questions, and that came off as disingenuous. Justin being around was pretty much a meme by the end, which, while funny, also was a shame, as I felt like we should have gotten to know him more seriously if he was going to be in the final two. And seeing the bloopers and the behind-the-scenes stuff come out, then seeing the guys chat and interacting online after the show, it became apparent that everyone was a lot friendlier with each other than the season led on, which I wish had been more showcased. I guess we'll get to know quite a few more of them in the upcoming season of Paradise, but for now, I'm giving the cast a B-. The For the Right Reason squad was annoying, but there were a lot of great guys as well. Which brings us finally to the romance. I'm gonna be honest, I felt a little let down when it comes to the romance department, but in a different way than with the last season of The Bachelor. Now this season, I think the romance was there and that it was getting off to a great start, but then somewhere around the middle, we dipped. Maybe it's because the season was only 10 episodes and cut so short, or maybe it's because Blake, the eventual winner, came in during episode 4 and really only started his journey halfway through the season. Not to mention, part of that included people questioning his intentions, as this was the third Bachelorette that he was dating. And don't get me wrong, I like Blake. It's just that him going from episode 5 getting his first one-on-one -on -one, to episode 10 getting engaged is always going to end up being a little rushed. Plus, one of those episodes in between was entirely dedicated to Michael and the men tell-all, so that's even less screen time. Throw in the whole Greg business for another episode, and the fact that most of the ending was edited in a way to make it seem like Blake might not propose, and I think I've pinpointed why I didn't have the same sense of excitement for this ending as I've had for other seasons with proposals at the end. I say this from an editing perspective, I don't mean to hate on them, I really, really hope they're happy and I wish them the best, but I can't help but leave this season feeling like I wanted more. The romance gets a C, leading to an overall score for the season as a C, which feels pretty accurate to me. There were great moments and boring moments, fun moments and tiring moments, and in the end I felt it was an okay season. One that will be talked about for a long time because of the wild Greg and Katie breakup, but otherwise will probably fade into the middle ground of Bachelorette seasons past, and I think that's just something Katie couldn't control. So that's it for this video grading Katie's season. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, give the video a like, subscribe for more content, and let me know your grades for the season in the comments section below. A new season of Bachelor in Paradise is coming up next, and until then, Bachelor fan take out. Every step you took to get here, I paved the road. You, you just walked down it. Thank you for your feedback.